people just like the student culture where you get cheap drinks and everyone's young but you know I me personally I provide a mixture of people is nicer really nice hi my name's Eleanor Wilson I study law LLB at De Montfort University I've just finished second year going into third year could you tell us your hometown yeah, my hometown is Kent and I'm from Sittingbourne. Can you tell us what you do alongside your course? Alongside my course, I've got my own YouTube channel called E.W Legal Series, which provides legal insight, legal careers guidance, a student tips. And then I have a hub called Law Students Unite, which posts updates on my blogs, I have my own equality blog called Man Made Dreams and also posts um, updates on my YouTube videos and gives the sort of same thing, career guidance, legal tips, that motivational spirit to give students, pushing them in the right direction. Could you manage the course you're currently taking? The course I'm currently taking yes. at university? Yeah, that's, yeah. Law, that's Law LLB. Why did you choose your course? This is quite a, there's many answers to this question, but the most simple, straightforward one is I did it at A-level. I really enjoyed it. I found it interesting, the real life aspect to it with the cases. And then I did some work experience during six form. I went to the court system. I thought, oh, I could really, I really want to work in a professional environment like this. And so I wanted to invest my time and money into something worthwhile and something that I knew I already previously enjoyed. And so I, I studied at a university. You said you just finished your second year. Yeah. What have you thought of your course so far? I've, it's been a really good experience. Uh, there's been, it's probably been the biggest learning curve for me throughout the first and second year. I found that first year to second year was probably the biggest jump. I've made lots of new friends. I've learned about a lot of different cultures. I've, I've learned a lot about life. I've gained independence. I've, I've continued my education cycle, which is obviously a really good thing. So that's sort of motivated me to want to educate myself more. I've, it's made me get, in, get more into reading. Um, it's, it's more specifically non-fiction books. Okay. It's done a lot of positive things for me. I, I wouldn't say it's had any negative effects. Did you come from a college or sixth form background? I came from a sixth form background. In sixth form, what A-levels slash subjects did you do? I did A-level law, A-level psychology and A-level English literature all essay-based subjects, and I, I, I advise against taking all essay-based subjects. What, would you say any of these subjects helped you in any way with your course? Yeah, law really did help me, and contrary to what people say, you don't need to take law at A-level to study at university, that's absolutely correct. However, it makes you understand whether you would enjoy it at degree level because there were some very intelligent people in my A-level class for law, but they just didn't engage with it. They didn't like it. And so I think it's really useful to study it at a lower level. So you're continuing that cycle of, of learning about it and reinforcing that study of it because first year of university for law is similar to what you learn at A level. So it's just reinforcing that and that gives you more time to make friends, socialize because you have that knowledge there so you don't have to try as hard. Does that make sense? What, what do you think the best A levels slash subjects are for your course? I think because of the amount of reading that you have to do in law, you have to take subjects that will really complement and help you have that focus in being able to sit there and dedicate your time to reading something strenuous, strenuous and something really impactful. So something like history would be really useful. English literature, because you're learning, you're reading a lot of books. 
English language because Eng you know when you're writing essays you have to come across really fluent and it has to flow really well it's got to be a lot of clarity so anything to do with English ones I would probably advise against well I wouldn't really advise against any but I would say things like they all have cross um they all cross over each other in terms of skills I guess and so they'd be useful in some way but things like maths and accounting and anything technical however I would say if before coming to university you know that you're going to be interested in commercial law which is a really popular subject I would definitely take business as an A-level because it would give you a grounding and understanding in how a law firm works because it does operate as a business and so that's a very good one to take. Could you ask of the university you're currently studying at? Is that what, sorry? Could you remind us of the university you're currently studying at? Yeah, it's De Montfort University in Leicester. What are the best and worst things about studying at your university, starting off with the worst? If there's nothing bad, that's good too. Yeah, I, I actually can't think of a, a bad thing in my mind right now. If we're talking about the course specifically and the resources and everything around it I would I wouldn't say there's anything so just being bad. a student at your university is there anything bad about it any bad sides to being a student so if a student was going to come and study any subject at any course at your university so anything they should expect that could be bad you have to have a certain degree of confidence before you go to university if you want to make the most of it. I took a gap year and it was the best decision I ever made. It made me realise what was important at university, the steps I wanted to take. Getting that bit of independence in before going to university I think is really important. You need to be able to integrate yourself fully into the student life. And if, you, if you're a bit of um, an introvert, I would suggest doing some activities, going to clubs, even going on holiday during summer, maybe going to a few cities, learning about the culture, just so you have more of an understanding of people and culture and integrating yourself and having that confidence to go and talk to people is very important because you do want to make the most of your time there. The best things? Yeah, the best things about my university and course is it's, it's campus-based. So walking from one place to another is very easy and it makes the student life very laid back, very... Easy, yeah, just to live there. Easy going, everything's accessible. Mm. And meeting new people. I think that's a given in any university you go to, but my university specifically it has its own law library for my course and I find that really useful it being separated from the main library because there's less people it's more of a inclusive exclusive atmosphere for law students and so you relate to them on that level and you go to the the librarians that specifically know about the law and can help you on it and it's, it's like a community hub in a sort of way and I think a lot of universities don't have the law library specifically. They just have the main library with the law section. So I think that's a really good thing about my university. If we go into your university accommodation, where did you live in your first year? I lived in student halls. It was a place called The Grange. It was just off of university campus. What did you think about it? I thought it was one of the best experiences, but worst experiences in my life, to say the least. I would say it helps you grow a lot as a person. If you if you've been used, a lot of people will say this as well. If you've been used to staying at home with your with your parents or one parent, and they cook for you, and you get you're very dependent on them, you're being plunged into a space of okay. your people from different backgrounds. You have to learn how to cook for yourself, clean for yourself, just be independent, really manage your time. And it's great to meet new people, but you also have to be conscious that the people you're meeting are going to be completely different 
potentially to the way you've been brought up and it's it will be very lucky if you find someone that's been brought up the same way as you and, and shares the same values if you, as you so in that way you have to be very open-minded your second year second year i didn't stay with anyone from my halls i decided to stay from free to stay with free law students who were on my course I would say living in a house was a lot better than halls in the sense that you have more of a communal sort of hub where you can, where you're closer to each other. However, I would advise against staying with people on the same course as you. It's very easy to clash because you might, well, as law students in particular, you, you may argue a lot. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. Um, what do you what do you think the best accommodation is? The best accommodation spread out across every accommodation within you. Yeah. So I've only experienced halls and house share. I'd say for students who are struggling with the money aspect or and don't get full loan, for example, always try and house share. It's the cheapest option. We privately rented. So we went, we found a, la a private landlord on Facebook that accommodated for students. I was paying 60 quid a week, about 70 with bills, which is very cheap. And however, halls are really good for your first year, just for the experience and to integrate yourself into the uni culture and to make friends. I'm going into a studio next year. I haven't experienced that yet, but I'm hoping for third year I can get my head down, have my own space and experience living alone to, so I can integrate into the work and world afterwards being fully independent. What do you think yeah. of the... Oh, sorry, carry on. I think there's different stages. I think you shouldn't come into uni and live alone. You should at least get a taste of living with people at first. And then decide if, if living with people is not for you, go into a studio. But in terms of financial resources, living with others is always a viable solution to, to, your, to, to your lack of finances, is what I would say. Okay. What do you think of your university area? I'm talking more like of the nightlife. What's the nightlife like in your area? So when I first went to the taster session at my university, I quickly came to found that the, the nightlife was very vibrant. There's a lot of bars. Everyone is very atmospheric. There's a good mixture of older and younger people, which, which doesn't make it centrally like student exclusive, which makes it nicer because you're not, you're not just getting all like really drunk people who are younger. You're actually getting, um, a vast variety of people everyone's different some people just like the student culture where you get cheap drinks and everyone's young but you know i me personally i provide a mixture of people is nicer really nice cheap pubs bars a lot of nice student pubs within the area there is two main nightclubs. You've got Mosh and Club Republic. I personally prefer Club Republic because they have something called, I, I forgot what it's called actually, it's like Pound Friday or something. Um, I forgot what it's called, but basically do all pound drinks on a Friday, which is really beneficial when you're quite skin. Uh, and um, Mosh is quite, <clears throat> Mosh is a very good student nightclub, but it's just, it, it might be worth bearing in mind that it's quite a it is very student orientated whereas club republic's not so much that's a mixture of people mosh they have student nights but it's very very crowded where it's student central so yeah they i i prefer club republic personally because it's it's a lot bigger and you get a lot more space to walk around to talk to people to dance etc Compared to where you live, what is the shops and food variety like? Have you got your local shops, your your popular shops, a good mix? What is it like? Yeah, so I'm from a pretty small town. So honestly, going to a city where everything's around you is perfect. There's there's conven local convenience stores right near you pretty much wherever you are. The town is accessible. It's a ten, 10 minutes away. There's lots of coffee shops to explore. Lots of nice food places. My favourite food place is Oodles. It's a Chinese place where 
you get you can choose between a small medium and large pot and you get to mix and match with you can get a dry dish and a saucy dish that's really good because that accommodates for students and then you've got all your main ones like you've got greg's nando's you know there's a couple of mcdonald's i think the variety of, of food and calf places to to choose from is endless and it, it's really good if you're coming from a small town and a village to get to explore that. Okay. Is there anything else you think a student would need to know about living in the area? Yeah, if I, if I have to be honest, <clears throat> there is a lot of, it's quite an impoverished area. There is quite a lot of homeless people. It is quite, I would define it as quite a poor region. Although it's got a lot of opportunity, obviously in it, with every city, you do get your poor aspects. And coming from some, someone who comes from a small town or a village might not be used to that. They might not be used to um, walking past a homeless person and constantly um, being approached by homeless people. So I'd say that was definitely something to consider. Nothing to be scared of, of course. But it's something to be wary of because you're in a completely different place, somewhere where you're probably not used to. Um, that's yeah. probably the bad thing about it. But also be aware that you're in quite a big city, and so there's a lot of traffic. It's very busy. You might. You might want to be with people at night because, you know, in a city, it's, it's more likely that there's going to be crime because it's zone one, you know, you're more likely to get stabbings and stuff like that. So oh. I would always, I would not travel alone at night. Okay. If, what advice, general, what general advice would you give to students about to start their first year of university? Okay. If I had to look back at my experience, I would say if you have any interest prior to coming to university in any sort of social club, absolutely go and try it. Try as many as you can because you've got a lot of time in first year. Join the gym. The gym is always a great way to decompose. It offers cheap student prices and it takes you away from the degree and you can also meet people at the gym I met one of my closest friends at the gym so it's you know it's a great informal hub as well and usually the gym will have a swimming pool as well which offers cheap prices it's great to keep fit I would also say obviously still study but don't let that distract you don't think that that's what your time has to comprise of have a good balance so during your free periods, maybe go to the library or a coffee shop with a friend and do some of the seminar work or extra reading that you've got to do in that time. But don't miss out on a night out because of it. There's a few times I said no, <coughs> excuse me, to nights out. There's a few times I said no and I wish I'd said yes. And I said no because I was too tired. And I think it's finding a bar balance something that doesn't compromise your mental health. If you really need to stay in and you're exhausted, then stay in, don't let it compromise. But if, for example, you've got an essay due in a week and you're like, oh, you're, you're, you're stressing yourself out about it. Don't stress yourself out about it. You've got a week to do. Do it a bit at a time. Don't miss out on the opportunity to go to networking events, go out with friends or go to social taster sessions is the main advice I would give to a first year. What advice would you give to students about to study at your university? Specifically your university. Make sure that if you're a law student, for one, make sure that you make use of the library and you go and explore the coffee shops and you go you go see Saw Point. Saw Point's really good for bingo nights. Um, and it's on the edge of university also go to all just just explore you know go to the gym what I did is I made the most of the tours that people were doing to so the gym going to see the gym mm. inquiring about different things about prices and looking at you know local convenience stores seeing what they're like seeing what would be the best one for you mm. and 
also making sure that you have everything in place so that you're registered um, and you've got all your student finance in place. Make sure that you double check all of that because you don't want to get to a place in your course and then find out that, you know, things are not in place. So your course can't continue. There's a barrier there. And it's very accessible. For my university, there's two student advice centres. There's one in the law building and one in the main square on, mm -hmm. on campus. And just so make sure that you go and visit them and, and find out anything that you, you didn't know previously. All, all I'm saying is always inquire if you need help with anything. And go to places. Don't just leave it. What advice do you give to students about to study your course? <laughs> Students studying my course, I would say, obviously don't be a brown nose, but <laughs> make friends of your lectures because they could be a really good resource and they could help you a lot when you need it most. Build a rapport with them so that, you, you know, you, you can build a relationship and you can go to them for when you need help. And they, could, they may also be able to help you in the long run um, with, you know, any work experience or advice you may need. I would also say if you're in me, me specifically giving advice, if you're interested, because I'm interested, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> in criminal, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, sorry. Right. I'm interested in criminal law. So me specifically giving advice, I would say in terms of module options, go for the ones that are criminal related. It's not, if you know what you're interested in, it's not worth taking a subject such as commercial law, employment law, if you know that you're not going to do it in the yeah, future. Yeah. I would also say with, with criminal law, something that I didn't know before is that it ties in really well with family law. And so if you have the choice to study both criminal and family law, I would do the both because they do really complement each other. Okay. What are you going to say? I was just, yeah, I was going to say also other advice. Make sure you make the most of the law library and don't buy the books that you need for your course from Oxford Press because they will con you. Just hire it from the library when your exams come and do make notes in the library, you know, utilise the library mm. with your free time to complete notes because it's not worth spending a hundred pound on textbooks that you're only going to need for like six months and then get rid of. Use all the books you can in the library, which is one of the mistakes I made. You chose going to university over an apprenticeship plus going right into work. Could you tell us why you made this choice? I'm glad you asked this question actually, Calvin, because this is a big issue for me. Apprenticeships have slowly started developing and we're starting to see the importance of them. However, three years ago when I was making my choices, my school in particular, and I'm not saying all schools would do this, mm -hmm. did not even mention, <coughs> excuse me, did not even mention apprenticeships. If I had known more about them, I may have considered it. However, there's not, an, I, I feel personally, there's not enough awareness on them. Because especially if you're interested in going into a career in law, you get in your local area, perhaps if you're from a small town, a few paralegal apprenticeships, which helps you into that route into law. Um, whereas, you know, you study law for three years and then you'll probably end up in the same position in a paralegal position. However, saying that, I do know a friend of mine who did a paralegal apprenticeship after finishing A-levels and she decided she didn't enjoy it and so she went to university after the year and studied nursing and so there's two ways of looking at it I don't think there's any right and wrong I think it's more about I think apprenticeships do offer really low wage however they offer the skills and training for you to quickly up the ranks and yeah. get a better job they give you that work experience but equally, at university, you can get work experience on the side. The university experience whilst gaining many skills and social skills as well, the independence. Mm. You're, in, you're paying 
you're paying and investing in your future in a in a different way mm. whereas you could take the risk of going straight into an apprenticeship not knowing much about it or that industry or field not having networked at university with individuals in that field and not enjoy it which is exactly what my friend experienced so i think before doing an apprenticeship you really need to network with that company understand more about what they offer progression um you know what's the sort of progression like in that company and if you know for a fact you're going to enjoy it then absolutely do an apprenticeship but for people who are more uncertain university is definitely a stable choice and it's a great experience i would never say to someone don't go to university you know a lot of people complain about the debt and, and say, you know, you're going to get into loads of debt. No, because it's an investment in your future. Mm. You're doing work experience on the side. I had no idea that even by second year, I would have my own YouTube uh, channel, my own blog, you know, developing myself in this sort of way whilst helping others, whilst also getting to know what really would interest me in the career I want to go into the future. Because I now know in my mind for sure that I want to go into criminal that criminal law interest me and I want to go into that area. Whereas before I wouldn't have known that university has really solidified that for me. Could you tell us about your gap year? What you did, why it was needed, why it wasn't needed and what it did to you before you started university and would you do it again? Yeah, so I'll start with the positives of a gap year. It gave me a lot more independence. It made me more open-minded. However, I think that a year is very long. You don't think it at the time, but I think I could have got the experience I got, got the independence I needed by researching effectively during A-levels and um, you know, and working during A-levels part-time to save the money to travel throughout summer even if you're going to a few cities it doesn't have to be a whole gap year because what I I did instead was I worked at McDonald's during my gap year and went to and from holidays um so I went back to work there to get money went on holiday again and 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 then I went to Costa because I got a car I I managed to get my license in that time what car did you get I got a Fiat Stylo okay (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to get stuff done if you don't have the time to do it during A-levels. Like, for example, I knew that I had to work part-time during A-levels. I was doing three intense essay subject, essay-based subjects. I didn't have the time or, you know, the motivation to think about other things, to think about my license, to think about the degree. For me, it really helped me understand that I wanted to go to university and I wanted to progress in that kind of way. Otherwise, I would have been, you know, stuck at Costa, which I enjoyed, but long term, I needed, my mind needed cultivating more. And so I would say, if you have the time during A-levels, really try and research beforehand on the weekend in any free spare time you have of places that you want to visit during the summer before you go to university but if you feel that you do need longer you could always secure that university place and defer it for a year and then work and then that will really make you value university more it will really make you realize why you went because otherwise you know I would have stayed at McDonald's I wouldn't have known the difference between working a normal job with shift hours and getting that income to taking a huge risk, both financially, socially, pushing myself out of my comfort zone, unless I took that gap year. So I would never advise against a gap year, but I would just say, always try and manage your time effectively during A-levels or college and use all the free time you have to research as effectively as you can on what you want to do during the summer or your gap year. Could you tell us more about your blog, Instagram and YouTube? Yeah, so I, I'll start with my blog because I'm really, I'm really, that's, I would say, one of my biggest achievements and something I'm really proud of. My blog is an equality blog called Van Made Dreams. Now, I got inspiration for this blog for a few things. 
Firstly, it was my voluntary experience at UEFA. This is a domestic abuse agency which empowers women and helps them to come out of domestic uh, and abusive relationships. And I got the inspiration from UEFA because when we was doing our training sessions, I noticed there were a lot of issues I'd never heard about before. And being my age, I would have thought, you know, I'd at least heard about it. There's a lot of obscured issues that are not covered and there's not much awareness on. And so I thought of the initiative to create a hub and create educational blogs to bring a critical eye and bring attention to these issues and make people think about them. It's all about, for me, it's all about perhaps long-term changing attitudes. Also educating people on real life issues that one might not always learn at university because it's very theoretical. And I also did a role at university um, where I was a career rep and as a part of my role I had to research gaps in the educational market so to speak and one of them was um, inclusivity and it was about bringing ideas on board that would benefit minority groups and so I did a woman in law presentation on the history of women, women for outlaw because obviously they didn't used to have the vote mm -hmm. and they, they, they didn't have access to education and that really pushed me to want to that made me interested in genderized issues and pushed me to do the blog oh yeah, I feel like I've spoken a lot about that I just need a brief all right um, so can I'll, I'll talk some so say if there was students looking for uh looking at your blog what what can they expect to see the most is it more about equality is it more about justice so he's talking specific specific are your your um kind of what you write about specific to one majority of but uh, minority of people majority of people or do you go more of a broader scale so when they go on your channel it's not only just what you spoke about you kind of try to get into different things so at the moment it's specifically because my role at UAVA entails empowering women it women it is its purpose is to empower women but it's on the whole it's to educate all of society about these issues however I do intend one of my ideas is to bring in ideas exclusive to men as well, say like monthly or two monthly, about issues such as toxic masculinity and things that men suffer as well, just mm -hmm. so it's not purely focused on females. But in terms of things I have learned and things I want to express and my niche areas of interest, that's sort of what it covers. How have I do intend on making my audience wider so perhaps men will feel more included in that audience. Your Instagram? Yeah, so my Instagram is Law Students Unite. And essentially, it's a hub to inspire people to think differently about issues. But also to... So, for instance, one of my ideas is bringing people away from this t traditional of <clears throat> orthodox way of law, which is the solicitor or barrister route, when actual, in fact, there's a lot more opportunities than that that, that, that a law student can go, can go into. It's also to educate people on things that I've learned at un university. So using my experience and my knowledge to educate people. So I make sort of fact pages. I did one about cross-examination because one of my courses was an advocacy course. It was called Interprofessional Legal Skills, where I did a lot of cross-examination. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for an aspiring barrister to know little um, niche things such as these that are not always covered in the degree or, you know, just making people think upon obscured issues that are not really spoken about. And it's also to drive traffic in all honesty to my youtube and my blogs because i thought it would be a really good organizational hub for that rather than using my personal instagram to keep you know uh what's the word bombarding people with all mm. my educational um, resources and your youtube yeah my youtube is more of a public awareness platform 
Um, so it's again, it's exposing obscured issues on things that are not always learned in the, the degree, specifically speaking about law. So one of the most recent ones I did was um, talking about murder rates around the world and the reason mm -hmm. for those murders and comparing it to UK murder law. However, some of the things I, I would have said would explain things that are learned in the degree but comparing it to other countries it being okay. international criminal like law a broader view but on it a broader view on it yeah and and speaking about things that are, are equally as important as the things that a law student might learn in their degree okay at this point i let students have what i like to call a free-for-all you can say what you want about what you like however long you'd want it so you can give advice you could put your ads you could say thank you you can literally do what you want and say what you want the floor is yours yeah yeah so first of all i'd just like to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak about to help other students but to speak about my experience i would like to say that i think it's hard to find your feet when you don't know what you want to do in any subjects and i think if we're specifically speaking about law here there is so much more diversity and access to the profession now than there ever used to be and i would generally give the best advice i can give to try and expand your horizon and to get an idea of what you really want to go into is to download LinkedIn and set up your own personal profile. Start connecting to people, start networking and really get an idea of what industry you want to go into. It's actually what one of my recent YouTube videos covered is, you know, it's also my YouTube channel is also to give advice from things I've learned personally. I only started building my LinkedIn page in mid first year, but I've seen on LinkedIn, there's a lot of A-level students. I, I didn't even know what LinkedIn was in A-level. It's a growing platform, job platform, and it's really useful for job progression and career inspiration. So if you're watching this, I would definitely download LinkedIn and start building your profile that way. And, you know, do, do it in baby steps. That's the first step. And then you can start building the confidence that you go to networking events and, and work around it that way. Never rush anything. Your career is not, it, it's a slow game. It's, it's, it's unwinding and it, it goes more like this rather than one straight mm. pathway. You've got to take each step at a time. And don't think just because your peers are ahead of you or they've done more than you that you're less worthy than them because you're not because you're unique in your own way mm. and you might be able to do something so much more effectively than they can and they might may be more creative than you and have more confidence than you and therefore they've created their own youtube channel but that doesn't they they might not have a skill that's actually really essential in the workplace for something that you really want to do so never undervalue your self-worth and compare yourself to others because it's very common in the 21st century um, with media the expansion of tech and media to always look upon others achievements and, and to yourself. Mm. Okay. yeah value yourself and, um, and your own achievements even if you haven't done anything alongside your degree going to university itself is an achievement Getting grades itself is an, is an achievement. Pushing yourself outside your comfort zone is an achievement. Making friends is an achievement if you were once introverted and couldn't do that. Gaining soft skills such as confidence is, is an achievement. There's so many things that an achievement, that are a success and achievement within yourself that might not be to the rest of society, but it's what you're doing to contribute to your own personal development that counts and not others opinions of what you're doing don't forget to like subscribe and i'm plugged in amazing thank you